from reading through my Bible. Actually, I was preparing to read in the book of Thessalonians, and I happened to open my Bible to 2 Corinthians, and I started to read it. And I read the first three verses of chapter 5. You'll turn there. And I, I noticed something, and I saw a note in my Bible. And the note said, nakedness resulted from sin. And it had me really thinking. And I was like, well, that's an odd note there. But nakedness resulted from sin. And when you think about it, in the beginning when man was created, man had no clothing, didn't he? The woman was brought to the man, and man knew the woman and said that they were naked, but were not ashamed. And you hear, you see the word ashamed. And if you take the A and the D off, you've got shame as the root word of ashamed. And when you run the references in the Bible and you look at nakedness, you'll find the word shame associated with that. And there's a lot of, you know, thought of Christ on the cross. And the feeling was, well, of course, every time you they would never have him naked, no matter where he would be in a movie, if they would portray it or somewhere else, they would always have a loincloth or something that would clothe him. But it appears from the scripture that they completely took his clothes off. And when they put him on the cross, he was up there and everybody could see that he was naked and it was shameful. And man did that and shamed the creator. And when you run the references on nakedness, you get some interesting things in the scripture. But it definitely resulted from sin. And tonight we're going to talk about that a little bit. So let's uh, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless this time, Lord. I pray that you bless the message and your word. I pray that we would learn from it tonight. I pray that you bless these references. And bless your people, Lord. I thank you uh, as we celebrate the Advent first coming of our of our savior the birth the baby jesus we thank you lord that you came down here and that you you bore the shame here on earth for us so that we could have the glories of heaven thank you lord for that and i pray it would be forever grateful lord uh, forgive us for our sins this evening cleanse us with your precious blood and we'll thank you in jesus name amen so let's look at second corinthians chapter five It says in verse number one, for we know that our far earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, this is dealing with clothing. Okay, so when you look at this, you're going to see that a Christian is clothed. Now, even when a Christian is naked, a Christian is still clothed. Because we're clothed with something that God gave us. And it's really weird. You think man tried to clothe himself after he fell. But that clothing was rejected by God. And man today tries to put a cloak over his sin. And tries desperately to clothe himself spiritually but we know that the clothing that man tries to apply spiritually is rejected by god just like adam and eve when they chose leaves fig leaves and they sewed those fig leaves together and they made themselves aprons that clothing did not satisfy god and that's a perfect type of an unsaved person trying to clothe themselves with their own righteousness or good works or what have you. It will not satisfy the Lord. It was God who then took an animal and killed the animal and caused the blood of the animal and the life of the animal to be drained out of it in order for man to be clothed, thus signifying a future event. When John saw Jesus, what did he say? Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, when you read 2 Thessalonians or 2 Corinthians here, you'll see that this is dealing with spiritual clothing, okay? 
and were clothed by the Lord. So tonight, and I said this last week as I was preaching, when you get saved, you're properly clothed by the Lord. When the Lord looks down from heaven, he sees people that are not clothed by him and people that are. And when you get clothed by the Lord through salvation and doing the right thing to accept Christ as your Savior, he imparts to you clothing like he did to Adam and Eve. We're going to go to those passages, but 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, For we know that of our earthly house, so it's a place where we live, our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, and that would be our body, okay? We have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be what? Clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. And that earnest, word earnest is amazing, and I've talked a lot about that. That's earnest money. That's earnest hand money. God put a down payment on us. He paid, you know, paid, and one day he's going to pay it in full. But he put earnest money down, and he said, I bought that. I'm going to put the money down right here. I purchased. Brother Donnie, purchased. Amen? Brother Dave, purchased. Brother Pietro, purchased. Samuel, purchased. Put the money down. How much for Tony DeNuno? A couple extra. <laughs> How much for Doug? How much for Bill? How much for Kathy? How much for Dawn? He paid it. He paid it. He put the money down. Boy, do we get the rewards, huh? Oh, man. If that can't get an amen out of you, check, do this. And see if it's beating. Because when you really grasp that, you realize, wow, I am bought and purchased by God. Of course, we could go, for we are bought with a price. You read Corinthians, sometimes you read them and you say, wow, some great things in there. Our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. You know, you're not your own, for you're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. He owns us. He owns us. We're not naked. We're not naked. He clothed us. He clothed us. But nakedness resulted from sin. Now, what I, 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 I saw that note. And I said, nakedness resulted from sin. But they were naked before they sinned. How does that work? They didn't know it. The knowledge of them being naked wasn't there. So nakedness itself and the shame that comes with it came from sin. Okay, let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 25. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. It's, it's good to read this about man and the woman here. Verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. So for you here, you men who have a wife, praise the Lord. It's not good to be alone. It says, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Adam had to have a lot of smarts, didn't he? 
when you think about, they say, well, man's evolving and getting smarter and strong. I don't know. I don't think any of us could have held a candle to the smarts of Adam. I mean, everything God showed him and told him and he was able to retain and started it off and passed it on. Imagine his mental capacity. He named every animal. After a while, you'd be like, oh, I run out of names. You know, he brought this cat, said tiger. And I have to do it in English because I don't know the I don't know the Hebrew, if he spoke Hebrew or what language he spoke. I don't know. I'm sure it wasn't English, but tiger, lion. Yeah. Oh, my. Elephant. Orangutan. Let's come up with that one. Gorilla. Dog. Chicken. <coughs> Macau. Come up with all these names. Every one of them. Centipede. Mosquito. God had to help him. I mean, his smarts just be unbelievable. And how much he would have known about the earth. You ever watch some of the survival shows? And you say, man, if I was out there, I would have died. But that guy took that planet and did that with it? I would have never thought of that. But they know it. He knew it all. He knew it all. I'm sure God said, this you can't eat, that you can't. Well, at the time, they could have eaten everything. And then when they fell, he would have had to know not, what not to eat at the same time. Because he could have eaten the wrong thing, and he could have killed himself from maybe ingesting poisons. You see, he had to have some type of smarts. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And because I'm an x-ray tech, I get this all the time because I know x-ray. And I was always curious. The first x-ray, I, I had to see a chest x-ray. And I had to immediately count the number of ribs because I wanted to see, hey, is that a guy? Yeah, that's a guy. Take a look at that. He's got 12 on that side, got 12 on this side. And as a woman, she's got 12 and he's got, and people say, well, does man, a man today, they have one less rib? No, we all have 12 women and men. But for Adam, God took the rib and he made the woman with it, okay? Closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they both were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So the end result of nakedness and knowing that a person's naked and the shame that comes with it comes from sin. Okay, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 7. Scripture tells us here, when the woman ate of the fruit, in verse 6, it says in seven, and the eyes of them both were opened when they both ate, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. See, if their clothing was good enough, they wouldn't have hid. But their clothing wasn't good enough. That's why the Bible says, because we're clothed by God, what can we do in his presence? What could a Christian do that an unsafe person can't do? We can come, what? Boldly before the throne of God. See, what did man do when he fell? What did the woman do? What did they want to do when they fell? Clothe themselves and what? Get away from the presence of God. Hide from God. That's where man finds himself today. But when you're saved, you don't want to hide from God anymore. What do you want to do? You want to find yourself in the presence of God. You yearn to be there. And because you're clothed by the Lord, you can be there. God allows you. I mean, really, we think about salvation and think about the earnest money. But boy, to have the privilege here on earth to enter boldly into the throne room of grace. And God accepts us. 
And it says in verse number nine, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Didn't know that before, right? Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Now here you're going to see an interesting thing. It was the fruit, eating of the fruit that resulted in the shameful nakedness that they experienced. Wasn't it? It was disobedience and eating the fruit. Now, when you know your Bible, something would click. And it would say, hmm, nakedness, a result of eating that fruit. Consequently, shame came from it. So we have shame and we have nakedness in the same passage. And it came from disobedience by eating a fruit. Can fruit today cause nakedness and shame? Is it backed up by the Bible? Where? Proverbs talks about it. Noah. Interesting there, right? When the covenant was made with Noah, after he got off the ark, he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the fruit of the vineyard. He drank wine. And where did he find himself? He found himself asleep in his tent, uncovered. And it caused shame, didn't it? And it caused sin. And it caused something to happen that resulted in a curse put upon his grandson. Cursed be Canaan because of what you did. And you notice in the Bible after that, Noah fades out. He's hardly even mentioned anymore. Where else? Uriah, he tried, David tried to get Uriah to go. Mount Sinai, we're going to go there too. But there's one verse, and it's in the book of Habakkuk. Now, I know you all got that memorized. <laughs> but it's in the book of Habakkuk. And it's one verse that stands out to me in the book of Habakkuk. It's chapter 2 and verse number 15. And when you go there, you're going to notice something interesting. Okay. Let's go to Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 15. I'll give you all night to find Habakkuk. <laughs> you might have to give me all night to find Habakkuk. All right, there it is, Habakkuk. <clears throat> Habakkuk chapter 2, and here we have a fruit, the fruit of the vine, associated with nakedness and shame. I once had a Christian who was trying to defend alcohol and having it at his place and serving it to others. And I said to the person, I said, you know, in the book of Habakkuk, he said, don't you even go there. He said, don't you even go there because that verse does not apply to that. And I said, then what does it apply to? I mean, when you read it, you can't deny what it says. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 15. It says, woe unto him. I think it starts off in a very negative manner, doesn't it? Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also. Now look what it says. That thou mayest look on what? Their nakedness. So you're seeing here Adam and Eve sinning by a fruit and all of a sudden have to hide because they realize they're naked. And the fruit did that to them. Then you go down through history and you find Noah. And there are other occasions of this as well in the scripture. But you find Noah. And you find Noah drunken with wine and he's uncovered. And because of him being uncovered, sin results there. End of the Noahic covenant 
and God using Noah any further. Adam, cut off. Noah, cut off. Then you come over here. Of course, you can go through the scripture. David knew the results of alcohol, didn't he? And of course, with Uriah, when he came, he said, oh, I'll just get him drunk and he'll go down and he'll, he'll cover up my sin. But he couldn't get him drunk. And because of that, he didn't do what David thought he would do. And David had to ultimately pay the price for the sin that he committed with Bathsheba. He tried to cover it under the rug, push it under the rug. Here, we got a direct command. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. You better be careful what you set before your neighbor. You better be careful what you set before other people. Okay? If you're a Christian, you don't belong taking your bottle. It shouldn't even be your bottle. You don't belong taking that alcohol and putting it in front of other people. I mean, to me, I think it's pretty clear. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. That's the way God sees it. That's the way God sees it, drunkenness. Now, Austin had mentioned something about the children of Israel. Um, let's go over there and let's look at Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32 and verse number 15. And if you study this closely, you're going to see that it's Aaron who actually makes the people naked. He makes them naked. Because it's dealing with shame, idolatry, and lewd behavior. Exodus chapter 32 and verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of testimony were in his hand. What a glorious time that must have been for Moses to receive. And here he comes, and he's got these Ten Commandments, these two tables of testimony in his hand, and he's coming down from the mount. And don't you believe that he was just so full of God at that moment? And here he comes after being alone with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. And he's so full of God, and he's got to come down to a situation like this. It says... In verse number 15, and Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides, on the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. And I imagine Moses was probably so happy to receive these and so excited to do what? To show the people. I mean, here's the leader alone with the Lord up there waiting on God to give him the law. And he gives them this, these 10 commandments and they're written. The Bible says with the finger of God, here they are written by God. And he's got them right there. He's probably so excited to go down and say, man, I can't wait to show these to everyone. Look what God did such mighty work. That was short lived. It says in verse number 17. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that I that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands, and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burned it with fire, ground it to powder, and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought so great sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is be we want not what has become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. 
like here. They said, give me all your gold. And, and I, I threw it in the fire and poof, that came out. Now he left off the part that he took a graving tool, right? And he graved it and he made it. He left all that out. You see, details are missing here. And when Moses, look in verse 25, and when Moses saw that the people were what? Naked. What caused the nakedness? What caused the nakedness? The naked was, nakedness was caused by fleshly desires and acts that shouldn't have been being done. The Bible talks about this in the New Testament, that the people sat down to eat and to drink, and they rose up to play, and they committed fornication. And here they were, and their nakedness was apparent. They were naked. It says, and when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their, look at the words that's associated with it, unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, put every man his sword by his side and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. For Moses had said, consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. Okay, there you have nakedness, sin, and ultimately that boils down to shame in the end, shame. Okay, let's go over to the book of Revelation. So where there is nakedness, there needs to be a covering. Let's go to Revelation, but before you go there, I want you to go to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 64. Isaiah 64. Then we'll go to Revelation. Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64, verse 6. Now, when sinful man tries to clothe himself, and he'll use all kinds of things, he'll try to cover himself spiritually with good works. He'll try to cover himself spiritually with religion, right? When you talk to somebody about the Lord, all of a sudden, well, I think I'm a pretty good person. Who has ever heard that? Talk to somebody about the Lord. Well, I go to church. Talk to somebody about the Lord. You need to be saved. Well, I was baptized. Talk to somebody about the Lord. Hey, you need to be saved. Well, you know, all my life long, you know, my family, we're a pretty devout family. My grandmother was a preacher. Try, 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 try. Everything but. I'm a sinner. And I'm in need of God. And I want God to forgive me of my sins because really I know I deserve to burn in a devil's hell everything but the truth, right? I go to church. I'm covered. I'm baptized. I'm covered. I do pretty good works. I give to the poor. I, I, I help others. I support my family. What does God see? Clothing. What kind? Filthy rags. Now, the Christian, on the other hand, says, I had all that clothing before, and it didn't do me any good. It was like the fig leaves there in the garden. It was not accepted by God. I had to come to him to get clothed by God. And every one of us here is clothed by God because we accepted Jesus as our Savior. We got clothed by the Lord, and that's acceptable clothing. When the Lord sees us, he says, you're clothed. You're clothed. 
What does God see when he sees the lost? Isaiah 64, verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing. This is what man really needs to admit. But man won't admit. Filthy man won't. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. That's what man needs to admit. Just like those fig leaves, they won't cut it. They won't cut it. It's like filthy rags. The clothing is not adequate. It will not clothe. It's not acceptable by God. It's like Cain's offering. God said, I won't accept that. And instead of Cain getting right, Cain does what? He revolts, doesn't he? And he kills his brother. Perfect type of a sinner that won't come to Christ. Tries every other method. And in the end, won't get right with God. They won't do it. Praise the Lord, you were soft. Praise the Lord, I was soft and tender. And praise the Lord, when we heard that preaching and we knew it, we didn't try to make excuses. We were convicted. And we did something about the conviction. We went to the cross and said, I'm on my way to hell. And I'm filthy. And I need you to wash me. And I need you to save me. And you did that in sincerity, didn't you? And when you did it, he washed you. He washed you. All right, let's go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 3 and Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17. The most ungodly of all the churches... Laodicea, just like our time. Under the uh, 14, and unto the angel of the church of Laodicea write, of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not. See, they had no spiritual discernment at all. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy me gold trod in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. You get that white raiment. And you know, all of us, again, we're clothed. We're clothed. And we're clothed with fine linen. Now tonight, you might, I'm wearing a tie and a shirt, and I have shoes on and pants. You say, well, where's your white linen? Listen, I got two people. My flesh is clothed with this clothing. And thank God I am clothed, because that'd be shameful to you and me. <laughs> but I'm two men, ain't I? Am I not? I've got an old nature, the flesh, that's clothed, and inside of me, I got a new man. Therefore, and for those that say, oh, that pastor's crazy, that's all he talks is about that new man. I'm glad God backs me up. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. The old all things are become new. I got two natures and I got two people, two men in me. I got the old nature, the wicked man, the old flesh, the old devilish flesh that wants to sin and wants to do all that it shouldn't do for God. And I got the new man that's created after the Lord in righteousness. And that man inside of me is clothed and is clothed with fine linen, white and clean. And when I drop this old flesh and my spirit heads on out of here to glory, it's going to be clothed with white raiment. And I can back that up with Scripture. Revelation. Revelation. This is why I love Revelation so much. <clears throat> Revelation, it, it's a book about hope. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation 16 
and look in Revelation 19. Revelation 16 and Revelation 19. Revelation 16. And verse 15, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. You see, there is again, naked and shame go together. Okay. It says in Revelation chapter 19 and verse eight. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And all of us tonight have righteousness because of Christ. And when we got saved, God handed us something. God handed us something. We didn't even realize when we accepted Christ as our Savior and we said, Lord, and we meant it, Lord, come into my heart and be my Savior. And the Lord said, I will. And he said, here. And we took it. And he said, now put that on. And we put on the righteousness of Christ. And the Bible says that we are clothed. We are clothed with the righteousness of Christ, with the fine linen, the righteousness of the saints. Praise the Lord. People, we got a whole idea what we're going to be up in heaven. I mean, really, when you think about it, God explains it. You get that vision. I'm going to be up there and I'm going to be clothed with fine linen white and clean, and I'm going to be able to eat, and I'm going to be able to enjoy the things that God has prepared for me up there, okay? Now, sin, of course, we looked at this, sin is like filthy garments, and we can find this now in Zechariah chapter 3. Here's a good, a good analogy here, Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3, I'm, I'm almost done, just got a couple more references. Zech Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. I don't know if I totally understand this passage, but I've always liked it, nonetheless. It's always intrigued me. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. So you got three here. You got Joshua, you got the angel of the Lord, and you got you got Joshua the high priest. This isn't the Joshua of the Old Testament with Moses. This is Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? So they were both kind of, one was going after Joshua and the other one was protecting Joshua. And the one says, the Lord rebuke thee, says, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? And aren't we, aren't we just a brand plucked out of the fire? How many of us in here actually almost felt the fires of hell? You were so close and you knew it. And the Lord said, I'm going to snatch you out. Oh, man. You know, how many in here were that close? How many in here almost died, should have died, before you came to know the Lord? And the Lord said, I'm going to snatch you out. You know, a lot of you know this, some of you don't. Dave Spratley should be dead. Should have been dead. He should have drowned. He was rafting, right? Whitewater rafting. And he went down and he should have drowned. He wasn't saved. Now that same person that we refer to as Doc Spratley, and all that biblical knowledge and biblical wisdom. The Lord said, you're not going to drown. I'm going to snatch you out. And Dave got saved. And how many others 
Lord said, nope. You know the story of my father-in-law. The wire hanging down. They thought it was a rope. The other boy was faster than he was. And he grabbed the rope instead of my father-in-law. And when he grabbed the rope, he didn't let go DC power. He watched the boy electrocute right there in front of him. It should have been him. A brand plucked out of fire. Praise the Lord. Now Joshua was clothed with a filthy garment and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Amen. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Wow. Isn't that something? A brand plucked out of the fire. Take away the filthy garments. Get those off of him. I'll clothe you with good stuff. I'll clothe you with righteousness. Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of garments. And I said, let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. Praise the Lord. The angel of the Lord stood by, clothed in beautiful, white, sinless, righteous garments. Job chapter 29 and verse 14. Job 29, I have two verses left. Job 29, 14, and Romans 13. And these are both excellent verses. Job 29, all the Bible has excellent verses, but there are some verses that just seem to stand out above the others at times. Verse 14 of chapter 29. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. And that's what happened with Joshua. Right there. Right there. Clothed and they put a fair miter upon his head. My judgment was a robe and a diadem. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. In closing, we're supposed to put on something. And this is where the unsaved world misses the boat. They're not willing to put this on. And therefore, they're going to perish in their own sin and shame. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Romans 13. And let's look in verse 11. This should get you fired up here. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. So for those that have been dozing off during this message, <laughs> you talk about those beautiful conclusions in the Bible. Yes, I was thinking of the song. Uh, he says, uh, beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. I see you sleeping on pew number three. You know. <laughs> <laughs> as a pastor you see quite a bit but you see the beautiful dreamers every once in a while sleeping on pew number three four five six and seven then you say okay the conclusion and now and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed the night is far spent the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not, make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You can see the difference there. When you put on Christ, the flesh doesn't get the glory. Christ does. See, it's contrary, one to the other. So I hope you enjoyed that tonight. <clears throat>